two-pronged approach to dealing with global climate change. The first is to introduce some sort of emissions trading scheme. Okay. The second is to negotiate with other countries at an in, well, you know. Yeah. Well, like negotiate trade, at yeah. an international level right. on working on treaties and reducing okay. the carbon global climate change problem. Yeah. And the third is to develop adaptation processes yes, right. and, and approaches um, to dealing with climate change. In Australia. In Australia. Yeah. So it says a lot that they've accepted that climate change is either about to occur or is here. Yeah. And they need we need to adapt. Right. That's the key word. Yeah. So what they've done is they've funded a national climate change adaptation research facility. Right. It's based at Griffith University. Yeah. And as part of that, there are eight major issues that have been identified, including things like biodiversity. Right. Settlements and infrastructure. Okay. How are we going to adapt settlements and infrastructure yeah. to global climate change? Yeah. And as a sub theme of that, there is coastal vulnerability. Okay. In other words, coastal settlements, yeah. etc. Well, Bruce Tom has been heading up the settlements and infrastructure part, but in particular, his specialty is coastal vulnerability. Okay. So he's brought myself in and another fellow um, to be part of the drafting team on that specific issue to develop a paper for our Minister, Federal Minister okay. for Global Climate Change, who is Senator Penny Wong. Right. So you have been looking at sea level rise and yep. storm frequency? That's right. Yeah. Inundation? Yeah. And because I work in tropical Australia with tropical cyclones, yeah. and I've had quite a bit to do and say on settlements and infrastructure, yeah. um, then I was invited to become part of that team. Right. So has, has there been any modelling done on, on what the likely impact of climate change would be on, on the frequency or magnitude of cyclones? And, yes, there yeah. has, uh, for all over the world. Yeah. And those models are changing their, their outputs all the time. Right. But in general, the, the consensus at the moment is that in many basins, the intensity of the most intense cyclones are likely to increase, okay. but that the frequency of cyclones May decrease in some oh, really? in some ocean basins. Okay. Yeah. Is that true for the Pacific? Well, in fact, it is the South Pacific which shows the most dramatic decrease in frequency of tropical cyclones really? compared to all of the other basins: the North Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and the North Atlantic. Okay. So, climate change could actually um, we could see fewer cyclones. In the South Pacific, then? We might, yeah. With, with climate That's change. What some of the early models are saying. Right. Mind you, the models are at a very early stage of being able to uh, simulate cyclones um, because they need quite fine grain, uh, fine resolution models to be right. able to do that. So they're just getting to that stage okay. now where they can do this. So. The potential for uh, more revised outcomes is, and, and changes in possible conclusions is entirely uh, likely. I see. So, but possibly then fewer, fewer cyclones, but when they do occur, more intense. Yes. Right, That's more right. damaging. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, so, so how do you mean, yeah. Well, that, that still may translate to greater cost to society. Yes. As a result of these hazards. Just to pr protect against these big ones. Yeah, and, yeah. and resulting damage. Yeah. Uh, insurance damage, claims. Insurance claims to, to yeah. property. But also damage in this part of the world to agricultural losses. Yes. You know, agricultural crops and losses. I mean, it's, it's mainly sugar cane up here. Sugar cane, bananas, pawpaws, okay. mangoes. Exotic fruits. Exotic fruits. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Our cost man, Cyclone Larry, came through. In 2006. 2006. Yeah. It wiped out more than 90% of Australia's banana crop. Really? Because most of the yeah. bananas in Australia are grown in this short area of North Queensland. Where's the Larry? Tropics. Yeah. So, so bananas went from being two and three dollars a kilo to thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen dollars a kilo wow. uh, for a year. So as we did it it totally wiped out that year's crops, and we had to wait until the next year Goodness. before we got in more yeah. um, bananas. So is agri the agricultural um, is that agriculture recovered now? Is it back to what it was before, or is it still, well, I mean, still the, effective? Well, the farms are back online, but, yeah. but to what extent the, the losses have been yeah. recouped? Yeah. I don't know. People suffer psychologically. Right. Uh, also, cyclones, particularly in places like Western Australia, can put huge uh, impacts on the um, oil extraction industry oh, right. as well. Yes. Because they have lots of oil platforms offshore. Of there. And just even to close down for a cyclone warning can cost millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. yeah. So these are offshore platforms, are they? Offshore platforms. Yeah. And, and 
the amount of sea level rise here. I know in the Pacific Islands they're very worried in terms of particularly the coral atoll yeah, islands. Yeah, it's probably more of an immediate worry in the Pacific Islands at the moment and in Torres Strait. Yeah. Because we're going to have to deal with the complete um, translocation of, of communities. Yeah. communities. Yeah. So it's not only going to be a hassle for them to move from one place to another and yeah. settle into the new place. It's also going to be a hassle for the people that are already existing in yes. the community that they move to. Move to, yeah. So it's all sorts of pressures. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there's some, I've read somewhere, I don't know, I can't remember where, um, talk about abandoning coastal protection around these coral islands so that um, when you do get storms, they can actually build up the island surface uh, to higher levels. And in fact, in some, in some places I've heard that they, it's the coastal protection that's actually making the islands more vulnerable. Right. Because they're not building up, not allowing cyclones right. and storms to build up, build actually up. build up the island. Yeah, sure. Because of course the islands came into existence through natural build-up over thousands of years. Yes. In relation to, you know, allowing cyclones and other storms to, to build the surfaces up. Um, so I've heard that maybe, you know, if you let the islands go for a few years, a few decades, and let them build back up, they can be re-inhabited. Re okay. yeah. So there's not, not a great not a great concern on mainland Australia about sea level rise necessarily. Um, well, we're not looking at communities having to be relocated right no. at the moment. No. But there may be some localised occurrences of this. Yeah. Okay, so there's quite a few possible climatic impacts then along the eastern coast of Australia.